Hello, Dr. Zucker Naik. My name is Harris. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona in the United States. I'm an entrepreneur and a marketing manager. Two of my friends in America have converted uh, watching YouTube videos of you. Uh, one of them a Christian, one of them an atheist. One of my friends um, presented me with how to deal with an atheist DVD of yours, which I did watch. Uh, but that didn't answer my question. And I've asked this question to a lot of people with no satisfactory answers, a lot of intelligent people. Of all the scholars that I've ever watched on YouTube, in my opinion, you are the most rational, logical, easy to understand kind of scholar that I've ever come across in my life. And it is really important that this question is answered because I've never had a satisfactory answer for this question. Uh, my question is like a coin with two sides. The first side of it is this, and this is the question. I'm somewhere between an atheist and agnostic. I'm not sure where. Um, God has created this entire universe, and the Quran speaks a lot about how it has taken so many days, and mountains, and this and that, and life is going to be a test, and whatnot. My question is, way before God decided to create this entire universe, before he decided to put human beings, before he decided to send Prophet Muhammad or Adam and Eve, way before he even planned about doing any of this, he knew the end result of it. He knows in the end he will be disappointed by certain people and he will throw them in hellfire. He knows they will be burning. He knows they'll be tortured and that is when they'll be repenting for what they've done. Way before he created the entire universe, he knows the outcome is gonna be bad. It may be good for certain people who are in heaven, but he knows that he can save those people from being in hell. Way before he even decided to go ahead with the creation. Yet he decides to go ahead with it, with all his godly logic. Why would he want to do that? The question, if I can just put it in this manner, how can God be so sadistic that he would actually go ahead with a plan which he knows is going to end up in that manner? That's the first side of the coin. The second side of the coin is, for some reason, if I believe that, okay, God is all, almighty and he understands everything is great, God is great. Why is God insisting in the Quran that look at the mountains, look at the protons, the electrons, this and that, everything is so synchronized, how amazing I am. Why is he forcing us to find his creation amazing when it is a piece of cake for God? I mean, he just had to say kun and it was done. Then why is it a big deal if God has made this entire universe which is so amazing? Because for God it's nothing. So I should not be really amazed at his creation. He can do much more than this. So I do not understand why he wants us to respect what he's done or find it amazing what he has done. The brother asked a very good question and a very intellectual question. It's a very good question. And he has seen some of my tapes on YouTube, even of atheism. And this question that is troubling him, he hasn't got the answer to. The brother asked the question that Almighty God knows everything before he created the heaven and the earth, before he created human being, before Prophet Muhammad came here. Peace be upon him. He knew everything. If he knew that some will go to heaven, majority will go to hell. So why did he create the human being? Isn't it sadistic? Is the basic question, correct? Right. Second question will come to it later on. Brother, told you that majority will go to hell? Well, even if one person is going, it doesn't make any sense. Even if one person goes to he could avoid hell, that. hell, he could have avoided that. I mean, he could avoid being disappointed. Of course. I'll reply. The brother said, even if one person goes to hell, it is as though God would be disappointed. God doesn't get disappointed ever. Now coming to your question, I started a school. I started a school. And you may have heard Islamic International School. If a teacher takes an examination, if she's just, while she is giving the examination, she writes in the maths paper, two plus two is equal to how much? The student in front of her or him, the teacher, writes five. She can very well tell the student, change five to four. Would it be just on the teacher during the test and examination to correct a student who's writing a wrong answer? Right, but 
if she has an option that the student doesn't need to do any of that and still no, just no, go no. and No, no, no. I'm asking you a simple question. I'm asking you a simple question. The teacher has given the question paper. Right. All the students were informed about it. You're right. For that particular situation, for that fine. particular situation, the teacher can tell. Dear student, change five to four. What will the other students think about? Unjust. But Correct. God can be just at the same time. He can create a complete, completely different condition. He doesn't have to go ahead with that situation. He's not bound by any situation. Brother saying, God, Almighty God can create something which is perfect and will not make mistake. Correct? That right. God has already done. He created the angels. God right. created the angels. The angel never go against any commandment of God. But human being is a better creation than angel. The angels have got no free will of their own. If you have heard my tapes, if you have not heard, I'll tell you now. The angels are a creation of Almighty God, but not the best creation. Almighty God created the human beings. The human beings have a free will to go against God or to follow God. If you have chosen to be a human being, if you disobey his commandments, you go to hell. If you obey his commandments, you are superior than the angel. Because the angel doesn't have a free will of his own, then he follows God. It's nothing great. The human beings are the better creation of Almighty God. Almighty God has given a free will. That's a different question that Almighty God knows. Because he has ilme gab, he has knowledge of the future, he is more superior. So he has created such a creation which has a free will. The fault is of human being, not God. No, but God has created us with that fault and he knows he not can avoid fault, that. Not fault, it's not fault brother, it is free will. Why is he giving us a free will when he knows he's going to eventually put these many people in hell? Why is he doing something? That a is a different creation. Like, would you want to create something which can think on its own or would Why you want would to... someone so compassionate be... Can that, also brother, be that's what I tell you. Time. What you want, God has already created an angel. I'm asking you, which is better? An angel following Almighty God or a human being following Almighty God? Which is better? For me, absolutely, if I get a second chance, I would want to be an angel. Why would I risk Second going to chance, hell? correct. That's why Almighty God says in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 172, Almighty God bought all the human beings from the loin of Adam and asked them, is there one God? All agreed. Almighty God says in Surah Hashar, chapter 59, verse number 21, if Almighty God revealed the Quran on the mountain, the mountain would shut down. Almighty God says in Surah Azab chapter 33, verse number 72, it okay. is the human beings who were fools who said we want to be human beings. You and I, you and I were fools. Now you cannot backtrack. Once you said you want to appear for the test, once you read the test paper. Nobody test, asked me. That's they what, asked Adam and Eve. No, brother. Quran says every human being was asked. And then it is washed off. This memory is washed off. If the memory is away the test, Almighty God says in the Quran, do you want to be a human being? If you become a human being, you can become superior to an angel or can get inferior. If you don't want to become a human being, just pass. Even we, for argument's brother, sake, let me even in that Please let me complete. You ask the question. All right, go ahead. If you Sorry. interject, how will answer? Sure, go ahead. So Almighty God asks the human beings and the Quran says, we human beings were fools, you and I both were fools who opted for the test. Now, once you undergo a test, if you follow the commandment after free will, you be superior to an angel. If you disobey Allah, you become inferior to an angel. We wanted to pass with distinction, you and I. You and I. You told, I don't remember. Of course you will not remember. And even I don't remember. But I believe in the Quran. On the day of judgment, Almighty God says, not a single human being will object to the justice of Allah. That will come to know on the day of judgment. Only thing we'll say, please give us one more chance, Almighty God will say it's too late. Because if he wants to give you a new chance, even I'll have to come back in the world again. Again, everyone. So those who failed, he can't get only the failures. So the Quran says, no one will ever object on the justice of Allah, they will request Allah give us one more chance, Almighty God is too late. Almighty God gives us chances in this world itself. You make a mistake, Allah gives you a chance to repent. You repent, Allah forgives you. Again you make a mistake. All the, once you die, it's only one. So as far as the first question is concerned, why did God create? Because it's a better creation. Any logical person, including you, has to agree that a person who has the free will is a better creation than a person who has no free will. Only your question you don't remember is perfectly right. 
when you die, when you are resurrected, that time you and I will meet. Then you will say, I remember. Even I don't remember now. But I have faith in the Quran that Quran cannot be wrong because scientifically, if you heard my lecture, 80% of the Quran is 100% matching with science. 20% is ambiguous, neither right, neither wrong. So my logic says when 80% is 100% correct and not even 0.1% of the 20% is wrong, so my logic says even this 20% would be right. I'm a scientific person, I'm a logical person. So I believe in the statement of the Quran that we chose. If you wouldn't have chosen, you could have questioned God. Why did you make me a human being? Then God would have been at fault. But God says in the Quran, he asked, the mountains were afraid. Everything else was afraid. We human beings opted for this. But do you so, remember being asked? I don't remember being asked. Brother, if you heard my answer, even I don't remember. But if you remember the very the test, imagine if a teacher teaches you something. Teacher teaches you something. Teacher gives you the book. The teacher has to take away the book for the test. If the teacher says, okay, take the book and answer, where is the test? Okay, but what? After the examination is over, you can go home and check or not. But even before the Be exam brother, began, God brother, knows. Brother, 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 result. listen to me. After the examination is over, can you go and check home or not in the textbook? Absolutely. But during the examination, can you check? No. So now the examination is going on, brother. Once it's over, you can check. If you tell teacher, teacher, I want to see the textbook, I don't remember. No. During the examination, you cannot refer to the textbook. It will be called cheating. Correct? So once the examination is over, if you don't remember, you tell God, what is this illogical? But Quran says not a single human being will object to the justice. Let the test go over. So today, I being a scientific person, I being a logical person, based on my knowledge of science, based on my logic, when I read the other scriptures, and when I read the Quran, I find Quran is the only book, only religious scripture on the face of the earth which passes this test. So therefore, I, being a scientific person, being a logical person, agree, okay, fine. This statement of the Quran also has to be right. I don't remember, that is the test. If I remember, where is the test? So that answers the first part of the question. First part, that saying that God was sadist. God is not sadist. For example, I start a medical college. I want the school students to go to medical. How many students who go to school enter the medical college? Just roughly, can you guess? Few, surely less than 5%. Less than maybe 1%. So, why did you make a college where only one person can enter? Fine. It is for selected few. So, same way God made heaven, Jannah, Janate Firdos. Everyone cannot go to Janate Firdos. Why not? Sorry? Why not? Why can't, every, why can't everyone go to medical college? Because it's human capacity. If, if humans hey. were capable of being able to put everyone to hey. medical college, they would. That's the way we are made. The so, same way everyone cannot become a doctor. Only those who have the capacity, same way everyone cannot go to Janate Firdos, the high levels of paradise, we have to strive. God has given you capacity. If you don't follow his guidance, you cannot. If you follow his guidance, to go to Jannah is very easy. If you're intelligent, it's very easy. If you're intelligent. And if you're truthful to yourself. But if you're not truthful to yourself, even a non-intelligent man can go to Jannah. Only thing you should be truthful. God has given you different options how to follow him. Some people think they are smart. I tell them they're extra smart. If they were smart, they would see it is crystal clear in black and white that this is the word of God. You have to follow it. That's the reason Francis Bacon said, little knowledge of science makes you an atheist. In-depth knowledge of science makes you a believer in God. So I wouldn't say God is sadist. I said we were fools who opted to undergo the test. Not God. God gave you an option. What do you want to be? We chose. So we are responsible, not God. God is not a sadist. We are fools. That's what the Quran says. On the day of judgment, you'll come to know, inshallah, you and I both. Inshallah, if I go to Jannah, inshallah, inshallah, I'll pray to God, I'll thank God. 
you know, I was a good person. I choose to be a human being. If you pass that, if you fail, then we will crush our own self. Hope that answers the question. The second part. Sorry, what is the second part? That even if I believe how almighty he is, how knowledgeable he is, why is he so bent on convincing us? Look at the mountains, look at the electrons, look at the That's protons. Right. The second part of the question was that why does almighty God give references of the mountain that is created this? For him it is peanuts. So why is he talking? You know why is he saying? He's saying these peanut things, mountain, they would shudder. You human being was superior. Why don't you understand? Quran says in Surah Hashar, chapter 59, verse number 21, had the Quran been revealed on the mountain, the mountain would have fallen down to utter ruin. But to us human beings, it makes no difference. He's giving these examples to show that these things which are so powerful, the mountains, etc., which has created, would have submitted the will. Why don't you human being do? He's trying to give an example that we are fools. He's not trying to praise himself. And whenever he asks us to praise him, or when he says, we say, Allah Akbar, God is the greatest. Do you think it will change Allah? No. Whether you say a thousand times Allah Akbar or a million times, he cannot become greater. He's already the greatest. The reason we say these things is because it is our human mentality, our human nature that we follow the people who are famous, we follow the people who we praise. For example, your mother has a heart attack. There is unknown person on the street who gives you the treatment. And you heard that the best heart specialist in the world is Dr. X. Now, will you follow Dr. X's advice? Or the person on the street who you don't know? Dr. X. Why? Because Dr. X is famous. People know him. He's the best in the world. So the reason in our salah, in our life, we say Allah Akbar. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the most wise. Allah is the most intelligent. Why? If we say that, it doesn't benefit Allah. It benefits us. That if we praise him, we follow him. If we follow, we go to Jannah. To Allah, it makes no difference. Therefore Allah says, will you not then believe? Will you not then understand? That means the Quran is revealed to the people for understanding. So he's giving this example not to make himself great. He's already the greatest. Whether you say a million times Allah is the greatest, it will not make a difference to Allah. He's telling it to you. Allah says in the Quran, Allah does not require you, you require him. So when we praise him, it is human psychology that the person you praise, person you talk great about, you tend to follow his advice. By following his advice, it will benefit you, it will not benefit him. He is already the greatest, he is already the merciful. So these are rules and regulations laid down. He is our creator, he knows our mindset. So the reason he speaks about this then, ah, such a best. Like, you are a student of science, correct? I am also a student of science. The moment I come to know, Allah mentioned these scientific facts which we came to know today, 50 years back, it increases my faith in Allah. Allah says in Surah Fusila, chapter 41, verse 53, Sanuri mayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusim hatta yatabayna anna ulaq. Soon we shall show them our signs in the furthest regions of the horizons and into their soul until it is clear to them that this is the truth. So Allah is giving these examples so that it benefits us. For him, it makes no difference. It is benefiting us, so he is giving us a chance to follow him so that we can go to heaven. Hope that answers the question, brother. I recognize his power, and I understand he's amazing and all that that he's done. But am I expected to be amazed at his achievements at creating this universe? Because for me, for him, it's like a one-second job. Correct. Right. So for him, which is one second job, when he tells you not to have alcohol, if I you realize... Sure, but am I expected to be amazed but, at his creation? No, see, the thing is that, that he's not there to prove himself better. If you believe that for him it is peanuts, so will a person lie? No. So if he says don't have alcohol, you will not question him. No. Don't have pork, you will not question him. Yeah, but I'm not amazed at his creation because for him it's nothing. Compared to us, it's amazing. For him it's nothing. Right. But compared to us, a person who can create the universe, when he tells me not to have alcohol, I immediately follow. Sure, Amen. I don't mind following him, but do I have to be amazed at his creation, as is said in the Quran? 
See, as you asked me the question, should I be amazed at the creation? Right. I would say, if I believe human being is a better creation, then yes, I'm amazed. And then I say, Alhamdulillah, he has made me better than that. So if I'm amazed, he made the mountains, he made the stars, he made the sun. Ah, but he made Zakir Naik also. He made a human being. And we are the best of creation. So he gives these examples so that we realize what benefit he has given to us. All the favors he has given to us. Talking about the science, talking about the protons, talking about the mountains. Finally, he says, human beings are the best creation. So in comparison, we have to agree that our creator has created this human body, the molecules, the DNA, the complex thing, which can never come by chance. So in this way, we are amazed at the creation of the human being. And then we submit to him. If you are not amazed, only by being amazed, we submit that he is our creator, he is worth worshipping. No one else can do that. This is so that we worship him and we pass the test and we go to paradise. Hope that answers the question. If Bill Gates gives me $100, should I be amazed that he has given me that money? Uh, I believe that the question has been answered and unfortunately we are very constricted for time. You are welcome to come back tomorrow, inshallah. As with all of the brothers and sisters, we have come to the end of tonight's session. So please, a very I'll just big give thank this you. Last. He said, if Bill Gates gives you $100, be amazed. Will you get amazed? Brother, the question is, why should Bill Gates give you $100? <laughs> if you tell me a Tom, Dick and Harry gives you $100, nothing to be amazed. Bill Gates gave me $100. It's something that he gave you. Why did he give you one and somebody else? Why? The question is, why did he give you, is the question. Okay. If some Tom, Dick and Harry gives you, if a man on the street gave you $100, Bill Gates. Got it. You got That's it, no? Nah? Got it. I got that. So now you're convinced, the, huh? Yes, absolutely. That is the answer. So inshallah, I hope that we'll come closer to Islam. So I should not be amazed at the fact that he's given me the money. I should be amazed it's him who's given the money. Alhamdulillah. Got it. So it was worth the time extending. Alhamdulillah.